Hi everyone, uh, my name is Martin and I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Fractory. Uh, yesterday during the Northwest Industry Business Board meeting we discussed that uh, whoever you ask everybody has, to, has a different explanation for what the industry for the dough actually is. Uh, for me industry for the dough isn't just about applying robots and, uh, and sensors to stuff. It's more about uh, the people, uh, analytical thinking and the mindset. That's why I'm gonna focus most of my talk today around people and, uh, and what they can do to take the steps towards the mindset of digitalization. I'm gonna leave the sensors and the robots to Bosch, Siemens and ABB which are doing exceptional work in the field. Cambridge Dictionary is one of the uh, explanation for automatic is doing without thinking about it. But we are notorious uh, for thinking about stuff. We can't lo let go of thinking. We can't force ourselves to be automated, to make our decisions automated. And that's the mindset that has to change. Right decisions, of course, are vital to the company's success. And, um, and uh, it's financial success, obviously. But how can we automate those de decisions that are more of a routine rather than value-adding decisions? And uh, as I said, it starts with people and their, their mindset towards this. Uh, from my experience, from uh, listening to hundreds of manufacturing companies, I can say with 100% certainty that all supply managers are making decisions every day that they don't really have to. Uh, going through dozens of uh, data sets that they don't really have to, having dozens of conversations. And uh, all that can be eliminated by very simple automation tools uh, that we already have available in our computers, for example. Of course, it's up to every company to figure out their specific needs and, and how exactly they will implement. Uh, but I will give and share some of the thoughts and examples how even s the smallest of enterprises uh, can take a step towards digitalization or industry for the dough. Now, do yourselves a favor and collect every bit of data uh, that you can. Not only will it be valuable, as heard before, when you start applying complicated uh, machine learning systems, but it will be valuable tomorrow. It makes me quite sad how many times I've heard and seen in companies when they're expecting a new batch of raw materials coming in, but nobody has any idea when it's coming and when is where it is put once it's there. Now, let's make a simple calculation. Let's say an employee costs around 40 pounds an hour to the company. Uh, putting a information into a system that is already in place takes around maximum three minutes, costing uh, two pounds. Now, if somebody doesn't know where something is and they spend 15 minutes running around the company and bothering everybody trying to figure out where the raw material is but or is it even in the factory floor <laughs> it costs 10 pounds which is five times difference now these numbers can really add up and the, the system doesn't even have to be anything complicated it uh, for a small company they can start out with a whiteboard on the factory floor marking the items and where they are where they are put and how many of them are are there it can also be one computer on the factory floor with uh, google spreadsheet open even better then this can be connected with the supply manager as well the computer will have weight for itself in less than one month the point is that people don't have to think about where what and when needs they need to be able to verify it with a glance. To me, that is automation. 
while I'm focusing on supply and demand, let's get a bit more complicated and behind the desk of the supply manager. I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with the situation where they ran out of something and, uh, and uh, people start running around and trying to figure out what happens and, uh, and uh, there's a lot of time wasted on that, this and it can be the same raw material, it can be discs for, uh, for an angle grinder that the welder is using. Uh, in, it, in addition to the minutes that are lost with the discovery, the reporting, trying to find the solution, there's potential delay in, uh, in the workflow itself. It can be days, it can be hours, but it also can be weeks. And this, of course, is then forcing everybody to go through an array of complicated decisions that we just saw should be automated. So how can we predict how can we simply predict that this situation doesn't happen again? Now, by using something very simple as the magic of middle school maths, you can build predictive uh, spreadsheets where you combine the calculation of how often do you order something with how many of the items you have already in your factory. And this will give you an indication uh, how soon should you order something new? This gives you a bit of a leverage, so you don't have to panic about anything, don't have to make any rush decisions, and you have automated your demand management and thus they can optimi optimize the supply. We're now getting closer to what Fractory does, and before I go telling how amazing it is, uh, I'm going to take a little more uh, example on the automation work of the supply manager that they can do uh, using, again, spreadsheets and, and email. So when the, when the cell in your, uh, your predictive spreadsheet is turning red, you should start moving. But before that, you should really grow your supplier network. What usually happens that the oh shit moment, uh, and you go to your go-to guy and you get something quickly, but you know there are alternatives uh, out there. So you should grow your network for that. Since you now know that you're ordering 80 bl blocks of aluminium uh, two times a month, uh, you can have email templates ready that you can send out once the cell is starting to turn red. And you can also track the emails that you send out giving you a bit of leverage on the suppliers and uh, you have the alternatives put together and you can compare them and order from the one who gives you best price or lead time or whatever is most suitable for you. This way you have automated your procurement without purchasing any complicated systems. Now, um, even if you have this in place for your standard parts, it's a bit more complicated with custom design parts. And manufacturing, as we all know, is becoming more and more custom oriented. The clients want everything in the, in the way they need exactly. The times of mass productions are uh, getting behind us. But uh, the same model of bothering tens of companies with a custom request uh, it doesn't really work out because uh, they will soon get frustrated from providing and calculating uh, the price for your custom parts. Now this is where Fractory comes in. Uh, we have automated the outsourcing process. Our online manufacturing platform connects the manufacturing companies with the engineering companies. I worked as a mechanical engineer for five years, so I know the problem pretty well. Uh, I spent hours and days on email chats trying to get those quotes for me. And I also noticed how much time the other side was spending on the calculation, but I also saw that the information is, is there for both sides. There was nothing connecting it. So in 2017, uh, I set out to change it together with my two co-founders. Uh, we built a system that is able to take in the customer drawings. We are currently focusing on the sheet and plate metal market. 
Uh, our system can take in the, the drawing. It uh, reads the drawing. It uh, does all sorts of calculation behind it. Uh, it presents the price for the customers in just a few seconds. After the customers verified and, and confirmed the price and lead time and everything they need to make the purchase decision, uh, the calculations go on and, uh, and, and uh, then the most suitable supplier from a network of manufacturing companies uh, is selected. So yeah, we've been on the market for 15 months. Uh, we started out fr from Estonia, where the company is uh, founded. Uh, we've been quite active on, uh, on uh, Nordic and Baltic markets, but we have delivered to 10 countries, and over the course of 15 months, we have managed to grow our revenue and client base 100% uh, each quarter. We've serviced around 350 clients. We've also been rewarded as best startup uh, at Europlet 2018, which is an event hold held only for sheet metal manufacturing, and there was 65,000 visitors there. So now, since we are getting quite a lot of traction here in UK, uh, we opened up our first uh, ever international office, uh, and we are going to be ba based in Manchester. Now to sum up, uh, industry 4.0 for me isn't just about sensors and robots. It's more about recognizing the data patterns, simplifying them, and getting the mindset behind automation and how can we simplify our tasks. You can